Alrighty friends, buckle up because this is your 12 month guide to becoming a full time content creator. Now, is this the only way to grow on social media? No, this is just what I know works because I've helped dozens of people do this. I've done this. Let's do it. Jumping straight into month one. This is the most important of all the months. So don't skip it just because you think you've already done it. Yes, that's right. I'm talking to you, Bethany. Here, you are going to envision your dream life, get clarity on the brand that you are going to be creating online and set goals that you wanna be hitting for the next 12 months. For people who rush this step, what I see happen is usually they all answer these questions based off of the path they've seen other people take. For example, starting with a simple question of like, okay, what niche do you wanna be in? What do you wanna be known for? They're like, well, I wanna be like that content creator. So I'm just gonna answer all these questions based off of this content creator's current brand. While it's great to draw inspiration for the people that you look up to, always pause, give yourself a little gut check, does that answer feel true and authentic to you, to who you want to be, to what you want to be known for online? Allow yourself to pause, take a little bit of time here, journal, close your eyes, meditate, envision what your life will look like when you become a full-time content creator. Forget the limitations that other people have placed on you or that you have placed on yourself. Say, screw that, and instead think, it would be really cool if fill in the blank. During this month, the questions that you're going to be focusing on answering fall into three categories, branding, social media, and lifestyle slash income. Now I have the complete 12 month content creator guide down below to help you actually stick to this plan. So everything that you need is all in this guide so that you could follow it, stick with it. This guide explains everything that you need to do for month one, month two, three, and so on with videos explaining each step so that if it's like, hey, do this step and you're like, what is that? It'll link you to a video that's on my YouTube channel explaining in depth how to do that thing. Because this guide took me over five hours to create and of course, this YouTube video took me over five hours to create. It's a dollar. So girl's got to run her business, download it for a dollar, and you'll have your 12 month plan that you could follow through for the rest of the year. So what sort of questions are you answering this month? Let's first talk about branding. One, what industry do you want to create content in, aka your niche? Do you need to pick a niche, niche, narsh in order to grow on social media? No, you don't have to. But the reason I include this step is because it's the most proven way to work for any social media platform, whether it's Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, picking a niche, narrowing down on that industry, picking topics and rotating between those topics, it's a proven technique that works on all platforms. So if I was starting from zero and I wanted the quickest route to growth or making money, I would pick a niche. Next question is who is your content going to be for? Is it going to be for stay at home moms, college students, people who are beginning their fitness journey. Think about who you wanna create your content for, and then think about what your content pillars are going to be within that topic. So content pillars are the subtopics that you rotate talking about. For example, let's break down my brand. My industry, social media. Next, we have the audience that I want to target or the people I create content for, which is aspiring content creators. And then I have my content pillars that I rotate posting about. Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, making money, and other businessy organization things. So when I'm thinking about content that I wanna create, I'm like, okay, what sort of Instagram video would be helpful for content creators? What sort of YouTube video would be helpful for content creators? You know what I mean? Another example outside of my niche would be fitness. If your goal is to help people who are just starting their fitness journey, let's break that down even more. Your content pillars could be at home workouts, no equipment workouts, basic form videos, nutrition, and protein. You're giving yourself five topics that you're pretty confident you could talk about and you're rotating between those topics when creating content. If you're not quite sure the answer to any of those questions, really what I want you to dive into for this month is asking yourself, what do you want to be known for? online with your online presence in the next three to five years. Next, there's some platform specific questions that you want to answer. What platform do you want to grow on? Instagram, YouTube, or TikTok? Pick some dream goals. These are goals that 
you don't really have control of, but it would be like really cool if they happen. For example, how many followers that you can get by the end of the 12 months. You're not really in control of like, oh, I got 10,000 subscribers. Like you can't choose when people subscribe to you. So you have your dream goals and then you have controllable goals, which is maybe something like how often you want to post or even some daily habits that you want to change. For example, maybe it's, oh, I wanna film my coffee making every morning. That's a simple habit that you have control over and that you can adapt to your lifestyle. Then of course you have some lifestyle and income questions that you need to answer, like what habits, again, do you need to change for you to actually put in the work in a perfect world? How much money will you be making every month as a content creator? And what are some dream brands that you want to work with? If you're somebody who's leaving your nine to five? Is there a date that you'd like to leave your nine to five by? All of these questions are again in the guide that I've created your 12 month content creator guide. Month number two, now that you have complete 100% certainty and clarity on the direction that you want to take for the next 12 months, let's start setting the groundwork, the roots if you will. If you haven't noticed, a lot of the work that we do up front in these first few months happen like underground, if you will, like no one can really see it. And sometimes it might feel like we're not really making much progress, but things are happening. It's working. You're setting yourself up so that you can freaking skyrocket like a sycamore with all those strong roots that you're creating right now. <laughs> Basically without strong roots from the very beginning, if you have a video that goes viral, you might just topple over without a solid foundation in place. What goes into this groundwork? You are going to step into your expert era, my friend. I want you to fall in love with this research phase, being curious, do what you gotta do to make this fun. The first thing that I want you to do is you're going to research your niche and your niche neighbors or competitors on your desired platform. So if your goal is to grow on YouTube, you are going to be doing your content research on YouTube. When you do this phase, you're going to be consuming content as a content creator, not as a consumer. What's the difference? What does that mean? You are not mindlessly scrolling and just watching content for funsies. You're doing research, my friend. You are seeing what's working in your industry. Topics, video styles, are there trends? What hooks are people using to capture attention and get high views? When you look at your niche neighbors or your competitors or people that you look up to in your industry, what questions are their followers asking in the comment section of their videos. How is their business set up? How are they making money? If you wanna grow on YouTube, you're going to look at your homepage. You're looking at what thumbnails stand out to you. What thumbnail makes you stop? Ask yourself, why did that thumbnail make me stop scrolling? Was it the thumbnail? Was it the title? What gets you to click onto a video? I like to look up my content pillars in a search bar. So YouTube search, TikTok search, Instagram search is not that great. If your goal is to grow on Instagram, I recommend doing your content research actually on TikTok because trends usually start on TikTok and make their way to Instagram. Anywho, I like to put my content pillars into the search bar to see what search suggests. So as a fitness content creator, one of my content pillars is protein right? I really want to make sure my audience gets their protein. That's how you build muscle. So I'm just, I just type in protein and I want to see what YouTube is suggesting I create content on. Protein shakes, protein bars, protein foods, da 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 da. For any that spark inspiration for me, I'm going to click on it. So maybe protein pancakes really gets me excited because I make a bomb protein pancake and I want to see what other people are making protein pancake videos. Here I'm studying the thumbnail, the title of the video, how the title is phrased. This one seems to be the top protein pancake video posted two years ago, has over a million views. It says protein pancakes, 10 minute breakfast, 36 grams of protein, low calorie. So if I want to adapt that success, I would recreate a thumbnail similar to that. I would also recreate a title similar to that saying maybe protein pancakes, 10 minute breakfast idea, 40 grams of protein because I want to try to beat them and get more protein. And it looks like low calorie might be highly searched for my audience. So I'm keeping all these ideas in mind. Basically, as you're doing your content research, keep a running list 
notebook next to you, notes app, maybe you use something on your laptop to keep you organized, but keep a running list of video ideas that excite you. Then during this month, based off of the information that you've gathered of what's working well, what's trending in your industry, you're going to create a free offer for your future followers, okay? Now, before you jump to the next month, do not be the person that skips this step simply because you think it wasn't relevant to you, Missy, Mr. I have had too many students tell me that they have regretted not doing this step from the very beginning. When I told them to do it from the very beginning and they didn't, then they came back to me and they're like, really, I messed up, I should have done this. And I'm like, yes, yes, that would have been nice, wouldn't it have been? Even if you feel like this step is not relevant to you, do it anyway. It takes less than 24 hours, so what's it gonna hurt? I'm gonna show you how to pick a free offer, what to create to offer to your audience for free. But let me just tell you, I had a student came up to me. They're like, I wanna hit 10,000 followers on Instagram. And I was like, slay, let's do it. First things first, we're gonna make a freebie. And they're like, um, that has nothing to do with Instagram. Like, trust me. So sure enough, she is actually in the fitness industry. We made a macro cheat sheet, simple, macro cheat sheet, took her less than a day to make it, threw it up on our Instagram bio before we started making content. And then we got into creating content after it was already created. Three months later, she grew to like 30,000 followers, grew an email list of 2000 people. And then at that point, it's been a few months and she's like, you know what? I think I wanna offer coaching, which wasn't what she like had planned to do initially. And she emailed her email list of like, hey, I'm gonna offer coaching. You can sign up or you can not sign up, whatever you want. And she sold out. She was able to completely replace her nine to five job within less than a year of working together because she started with a freebie. So even if you don't know how it's gonna benefit you in the future, just trust the process. So how do you pick a freebie? How do you know what's gonna make sense for your audience? Great question, I'd love to tell you. My answer is always Pinterest. I love me some Pinterest. All you do, it's very simple, my friends, type protein because that's my content pillar, right? I'm just gonna type protein, search. We're gonna see what pops up. Look at all these freebie ideas. What? Okay, so here, these are like the top Pinterest pins. These are the most clicked through, the most clicked on. So you wanna recreate an idea off of these proven pins and phrasing. All of these could be super simple freebies that you make in Canva. You know your target audience, you know what their goals are, what they're looking for. So just make an offer for them based off of what they already want. Make it free, they download it, easy for them to read through. Boom shakalaka, freebie's done, okay? We don't gotta overcomplicate it. Now I will say, in step one, if you're somebody who did not pick a niche, you skipped that step and you're like, I just wanna do the lifestyle, that's fine. Creating a freebie might not feel very clear for you right now, and that's okay. So if that's you where you're like, I don't know what I wanna focus on, I don't know what I wanna do yet, I just wanna create content, you're gonna skip this step until month six. We're gonna talk about it again in month six, so hold tight. All right, month three is where you're going to start creating content. Now, I would probably split this month into two sections. Weeks one and two will be creating a content calendar and coming up with content ideas, and weeks three and four will be filming and editing those ideas so that by month four, day one, you can start posting. Let's start with prepping your content calendar. Behind me, we have completely structurally accurate calendars with the perfect amount of days for every month. Now, what we're going to do is we're gonna start with a 90 day prep. And what I mean by 90 day prep is while we're creating content calendar for 90 days, this is kind of our testing period to figure out how often we can post without burning out. What we want to focus on though for these first 90 days is figuring out what our MPPW is and that's your minimum posts per week. How many posts per week can you push out without getting completely burnt out? This is going to help you create your cadence of posting. Standard posting for YouTube is one post per week. Standard for Instagram, about three to five posts a week. And then standard for TikTok, you have seven posts a week. That's just the industry average for each of those platforms. So if my goal is to grow on YouTube, I'm going to put an X 
on the days that I wanna be posting. I wanna post on Wednesdays once a week. So this is what my content calendar for the next 90 days will look like, giving me about four posts per month. So when I'm doing my content research and planning ahead, I want to really come up with four content ideas for this next month so I can start planning ahead for the next 90 days. And then of course, around the last two weeks of this month, I'm thinking about the posts next four months of this month. And then the last two weeks of this month, I'm thinking about the posts for this month. Now, kind of jumping back to your minimum posts per week. This is just like industry average. You wanna figure out what your minimum posts per week is. And the reason I say minimum is because we can always add more posts to your schedule. But if you go out all ambitious and you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna do seven posts like every week. I'm gonna post every day on TikTok. You get burnt out in the first week of creating content, you're gonna be like, I don't wanna be a content creator anymore and you're just gonna give up. So we're gonna start low. We're gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna make two TikTok videos. That's gonna be my minimum post per week. Two TikTok videos for month one. Then you could reevaluate after month one, be like, how am I doing? Can I add more? Then you could bring up that minimum post per week to three over here. For those of you who like to be a little bit more organized digitally, some tools that I recommend to help you with your content calendar is Trello, Notion, and Milanote. All of those are completely free. I personally love Trello. Trello is what I used when I first started creating content. It was just so simple for my brain to understand. I do have a video teaching Trello 101, Trello content calendar, all the things, but I also noticed a pattern with some of my students also loving Notion and Milanote. It really just depends on how your brain works and what sort of visual person that you are. Now we're going to jump over to the laptop to start coming up with content ideas for the next 30 days. When doing your content research from the beginning, I like to focus on search based content. So if your goal is growth or rapid growth, search content is going to be what you focus on in the beginning. I'm not saying you can't make videos just for funsies. Of course, implement videos that you find fun. But again, if your goal is growth, we're going to focus on search based content. What is that? What does that mean? These are videos that people are searching for in your industry, because if you want to be discovered and be discoverable, you have to make videos worth being searched for, worth being discovered for videos that people are actually searching for providing answers. So how do you do that? Type your content pillar into a search bar. So again, if you're want to grow on YouTube, you're going to use YouTube for this. If you want to grow on TikTok or Instagram, use TikTok for this because that platform is going to tell you exactly what people are searching for on that platform. Let's start with TikTok. If I am doing protein, we're going to keep the protein and fitness theme here. Protein. I just type in protein. That's all I do. I don't press enter. It's showing me recommended searches. These, this is telling me people are currently looking for this right now on TikTok. So I want to make videos about these things. And if you're like, okay, well, how do I make a video about protein meal ideas? Well, let's click on that and see what's ranking already in this category. So we have this video, this video, you're asking yourself, okay, why are these videos performing well? Is it the food that is being shot? Is it the angle? Is it the outfit? What's capturing people's attention here? How can you hopefully recreate their success? of ranking high in search on TikTok. Another thing I like to look for on TikTok is the others searched for section on your phone. It'll say others searched for, and I'll have all these things. So this is telling me, okay, I'm going to make a video where I start with saying lazy girl, high protein meals. Literally, that's what I say verbally. That's what I type in the text. That's what I use in the caption. Lazy girl, high protein meal prep. See, she used the technique. She used the hook. She used, I'm sure somewhere here, meal prep, meal prep ideas, easy meal prep. She's using hashtags. She's using all the things. So I'm basically just using the, the search engine to tell me what videos to create. Same thing for YouTube. You do the same thing on YouTube. In a perfect world, you rotate between all of your content pillars. So if you're posting to YouTube and let's just go to view my channel. If your goal is YouTube and like in our example, we chose to post once a week, which means about four videos a month. One video for me might be about Instagram. The next one might be about YouTube. 
The next one is going to be about current trends. And then the next one is just like a for funsy video that I wanted to create for fun. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to kind of rotate between my content pillars. We have YouTube, social media, Instagram, tool recommendation. So I'm constantly rotating between all of these pillars just to test and see what is going to perform well for my audience. And then with that, my dear friends, you surprise, you learned SEO. I usually don't like to start with saying do SEO research because people get scared of the word SEO. But this, what I just taught you, that's SEO. That's all it is. Using the phrases that is being recommended to you using those phrases everywhere in your thumbnail, in your YouTube title, in the description, here on the text that pops up, in the caption, in the hashtags. That's all it is. That's all it is, ladies and gents. Now, if you're somebody who at this point you're like, okay, this is a lot, maybe you're feeling a little overwhelmed or you're like, okay, I need more. I'm loving this, but I want some more. Give me the in-depth, step-by-step, juicy goodness for SEO research, crafting a YouTube title, going viral on Instagram reels, all those things. If you're somebody who wants more in-depth step-by-step stuff, you've come to the right place. <laughs> for the month of January, just for the month of January, I am opening doors to my course bundle, the BSP model. If you haven't heard of the BSP model, this is my biggest offer that I offer to content creators and doors only open one to two times a year. So I wanted to open doors for the month of January to help those of you who want to hit these big New Year's resolutions. The BSP model stands for Build, Scale, Profit. It is my three-part proven framework to help you build your brand, scale on multiple platforms, and profit off of your passion of content creation. The BSP model is not an online course, or is not just simply an online course. It's actually a bundle of courses. Within the BSP model, there's an entire course that teaches you how to build and grow an email list. There's an Instagram course, there's a YouTube course, and you will be enrolled into the TikTok course when it comes out later this year. There's also an entire course on brand collaboration. So how to pitch, negotiate, and land paid brand deals. There's also an entire course on making money as a content creator. So I teach you affiliate marketing strategies, creating a digital product, how to make an online course, all the things. I really wanted to make the BSP model like a one-stop shop for content creators to see all the success that they could even imagine or dream of online. So if you're somebody who has big goals for Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, online content creation in general, definitely check out the BSP model. Doors will be closing at the end of January. And if you're somebody who's watching this video in like March or April, don't worry. You can also join the BSP model waitlist because we will be opening doors again in August, September of this year. Now let's jump into month four. Congratulations, you have made it to month four. Four, month four is your first full month of posting. During this month, your only focus is to simply create and get comfortable and confident with creating content pretty consistently, balancing the filming, the editing, getting a video ready to post, all the things. You're just figuring out how to adapt this content creation lifestyle into your day-to-day -day life. There's no right or wrong thing to do here. There's no right or wrong video to create. The biggest hurdle that I have been seeing people hold them back is just like this perfectionism mindset where they're like, this first video has to be perfect. <laughs> and it doesn't. Right now for month four, your first full month of posting, messy action is better than no action at all. So just think of it as throwing spaghetti at the wall, checking to see if anything sticks. You're just getting in the flow. You're rotating through your content pillars, making sure that one, they feel authentic to you. Also keeping in mind if any of those content pillars are landing particularly well with your audience. Towards the end of month four, you're going to want to start preparing content for month five. With month five, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to do a 30 day analytic check-in. So I have a template in my workbook and the template is basically asking you all the proper questions so that you could look back at the content that you've posted over the past 30 days to see what's working, what isn't working. If you're somebody who's posting long form videos on YouTube, you probably won't see much traction, maybe not spikes in views or anything. It's a long game. YouTube takes a little bit of time to get traction, but what you can still do is check with yourself, check your schedule. Do you need to adjust your posting frequency? Do you need to post more, post less? Basically every 30 days you're checking in with yourself to see if this rhythm that you're creating is something that you can keep up with for the rest of the year or even 
two years, five years. Being a content creator is like, it's part of your life now. <laughs> I don't think people understand like it's, it's a lifestyle, <laughs> but it is, it truly is. After your 30 day analytic check, you can take what you've learned from that check-in and apply it to your second full month of posting. If you're in the fitness niche and you have form videos where you break down forms for each move, like a back squat, front squat, and you notice, oh, every time I post a form video, it gets more views. Now you could adjust month two strategy based off of what's working and hopefully double down, triple down on that success. Now, if you can, if you wanna challenge yourself, push yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit more, I want to give you an extra layer to play with for your content creation. On top of rotating between your content pillars, we're going to add in something called value pillars. Something that we hear a lot when watching educational videos for like how to grow on Instagram, how to grow on blah, blah, blah. Educators are always like, provide value, teach value value, value this, give value to your audience. I say it all the time too. I'm not making fun, I say it. And the thing is, value is subjective to the viewer. But what we do know is that there are four main value pillars or way to provide value online. We have educational, entertaining, relatable, and inspirational. So some people view educational videos as valuable. Some people view entertaining videos that maybe just make them laugh or stay engaged as value to them. Others like the relatability aspect and others find inspiration to be valuable. So your job this month is to play around with those value pillars within your content pillars. With each content pillar, you're going to figure out how to deliver value with the four value pillars. So you have your content pillar number one, how can you create educational content? entertainment, inspiration, and relatability. And you're gonna do that with each content pillar. So content pillar one, delivered, educational, entertaining, relatable, inspirational. Content pillar two, split into those four value pillars. Content number three, split into those four value pillars. Content number four, split into those four value pillars. So each of these is its own video, rotating between content pillar two, education. That's video one, right? Video one, this one, is video number two. This one is video number three, right? This one is video number four. So ideally, by the end of all the rotations, you have four videos under each content pillar with each value pillar, giving you 16 videos for that month. This is easier to do, I mean 16 videos, short form video wise. Obviously if you're doing long form videos, you're like, holy crap, I have to do 16 videos and like, no, you don't have to like go through all of that, but it's just something to spark inspiration. Let me show you an example. With this example, we're just gonna use me, hi, hello. One of my content pillars, as we know, is Instagram. So I'm gonna ask myself, how can I create a video on Instagram that is educational? Obviously here we have things like how-to videos. So I would say how to grow on Instagram, how to increase your engagement rate. Here's how to work with the algorithm instead of against it. This is usually where we have all of our how-tos or three ways you can. So that's my education video. Again, this could be short form, this could be a YouTube video, plenty of ways to deliver that. Next we have relatable content. This is where your audience, when they watch it, they're going to be like, same. And I know my audience struggles with Instagram. Sometimes they hate it to their core. So what I like to do is I like to use trending audios to my advantage here. So really I'll use a trending audio like for short form videos with a little caption that's like, Go, hi, more passion, more passion, more passion, more energy, more energy, more footwork, more footwork, more footwork. People are gonna be like, oh, that's funny. That's relatable. I get it, same. So here you want people saying same after they watch your video. Same, me, I get it. Next we have inspirational. So here I really like to show transformations, transform, Mation. Pretend there's an Asian there. I just don't want to get into entertainment 
area. So here I show transformations for like, I started at zero followers and in three months I had 30,000 followers, or this is how my student got 100,000 followers in six months, right? So I want people to see a transformation. I want them to feel inspired. Sometimes this is also using trending audios. The best advice anyone ever gave me was two words. You can't. And you know what my response was? Two words. Watch me. pulling that inspiration where when people watch the video, they're like, I can do that. I'm taking action. And then finally we have entertainment. A great thing to do here are skits. So I could do a little skit about like, I could pretend to be Adam Masseri and then I could be like, da, 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 and then I could pretend to be actual Instagram users and like, why did you make that update, bro? So you could do skits here because skits are funny. They're entertaining. Again, voiceover or trending audios where you're lip syncing could be entertaining. It's really figuring out what your audience would categorize as entertainment. So maybe something for my YouTube video, I would do a test video. I'm putting that in quotes. Might not be 100% educational, but it's entertaining. Now we're at month six. At this point, you are probably getting a rhythm with content creation. You're doing your 30 day analytic checks to help you come up with future content. You have the rhythm down with filming, editing, posting. And now if you like the change of focus that we did last month, where not only were we rotating between content pillars, but we also added that extra layer of value pillars, I'll give you something extra to focus on this month. For this month and month six, your focus is going to be responding to followers questions on your videos with more videos. Going along with the fitness example that I seem to adapt for this whole video, those form videos, right? They're performing really well and you're posting them to Instagram reels or on TikTok. And you notice in the comment section, people are like, can you make a form video going over Bulgarian split squats? Press reply to that comment, reply with video, make the video there and post that video. And then you're gonna keep that chain reaction going as people ask questions on the next video, reply, answer the question. We're gonna create a binge funnel, if you will, of videos that people can just like kind of easily click through and connect all of your content in one place. You don't have to do this for every video, but it is a great strategy to start implementing during this month where you're finally finding a rhythm. Now for long form YouTube videos, you don't really have that option where like you reply to a comment with a video. So you're just gonna pay attention to the comment section, see if people are asking any questions. So if I post this video where it's like 12 month content creator plan and somebody's like, Millie, really love this video. Now show me how would you organize all of your content in one place? That's like telling me, oh, I need to do a content calendar video where I show, okay, this is how to create a content calendar in Trello, Notion, Milano, right? So I could use their questions to fuel future content ideas. This is just a great way to provide even more value to your followers and even connect and engage with your community. It shows them that you're listening, you're responding, you're taking their ideas into account. And this also increases your chances of reaching more people that are your like audience because you're literally answering their questions, what they need you to answer. And then it reaches other people who probably have the same question. So it's just great strategy and just great engagement overall. Okay, now we've talked about skipping your freebie before. If you're somebody that didn't have a niche, how you skipped your freebie. Now, would be the time to create one. And what you're going to do is you're going to create a freebie based off of the direction that your content has taken, or even based on the common questions that you're getting from your audience. Hopefully by now of a few months of posting consistently, you have a good feel for what sort of content your audience connects with the most, and therefore you know what sort of additional value you can give to them for free. So this is where you would go back to month two and the steps that we talk about in month two of creating a freebie, do that, set it up, boom shakalaka. When wrapping up month six, this would be a good time to do a mid-year check-in, doing a content research refresh. Is there anything new that's happening in your industry? New trends, new topics. Also ask yourself, how are you doing? Do you need to take a break? Do you need to recharge? Do you need to change your posting cadence? All of those things. And then when you're ready, you can jump to month seven where we'll start talking about making money. At this point, you probably wanna start making a little bit of money. And there are two paths content creators usually take to monetize their platform. I mean, there's endless ways to make money, but there's two most common ones that I've seen, selling digital products of some sort to your audience or 
brand collaborations. In month seven, you're going to decide which direction you wanna go. What's the first stream of income that you want to build? And I like to start with one so that you can master it, build it, have a solid grasp on it before adding another income stream. In a perfect world, we build to maybe four, five, seven income streams. But right now, we're just gonna master one of them. First, let's talk about creating a digital product. I love this one because it is a great passive income strategy where you create the digital product one time, you put it up for sale on your store, and then sales just kind of come in as you create content around that digital product. There's lots of different types of digital products. So you could do like a downloadable guide, ebook, a video training, a mini course, a regular course, lots of digital product ideas. What I like to do, again, if you can't think of any ideas, you can use Pinterest as a rule of thumb. You could also look at your competitors or your industry leaders. What are they selling to their audience? Because if they're in the same industry as you, it's likely that their audience is similar to your audience. And then I use Canva to make all of my guides. So if you go to Canva, which Canva's free by the way, and you look up ebook templates, there's a whole bunch of templates that you could use to make your ebook and make it look as professional as possible. Once your ebook is done, then you're going to set up your Stan store. So Stan is the number one tool that I recommend to every content creator, okay? You don't need any other tool. This is the number one thing that I recommend to every single content creator because it's so cost effective. When I was starting, I wish this existed because I was like paying for a website. I was paying for domain. I was paying for Shopify. I was paying for this. I was paying for so many different subscriptions and this is like just $29 a month for everything, for all in one. So this is what you could use to offer your freebie grow your email list. You also down here, press add product. See, collect email application so you can grow your email list. But here, sell digital download. You select sell digital download. Or if you want to have a course, you could create your course on Stan. People can buy it through Stan, host a webinar, do memberships, all the dang things. One place, no, this is not sponsored. Get that out of your head. I'm just obsessed. You're gonna select sell a digital download. Once it's creating Canva, you download it, drag and drop it, choose a price, boom shakalaka, publish, you're making money. Actually, it's, we'll, we'll get to the making money part. But you're just focusing on creating the paid product. And ideally, this product answers your target audience's pain points. Maybe it gives them some sort of transformation. Maybe it's a full-on cookbook for high protein recipes. There are millions and millions of different ideas that you can have depending on the industry that you're in. So research your industry, see what other people are selling and make your own version, do your own thing. Now for brand collaborations, if that's a direction what you want to go during this month, you're gonna make your media kit. And in your media kit, you're going to focus on your top performing analytics. If you're like, how do I make my media kit? Remember the guide that I created, there's links, resources, I have templates on my website. But if you're like, Millie, I don't wanna watch your free YouTube videos teaching media kits. I don't wanna use your templates and all the things. That's fine, I'm not offended. Go to Canva, I'm not sponsored again. Type in media kit and they have plenty of media kits. Again, if you're using the free version, there's free templates and let's just open this one, okay? Let's customize this one. Basically with your media kit, you want to highlight your best assets. So if you get high view counts, great. Include how many view counts you get. If your view counts aren't that high, but your ratio of like engagement comments to followers is great, you have a high engagement rate, focus on your high engagement rate. If you're like, okay, Millie, I'm not really confident in anything, just use your regular stats of your audience demographics. Where's your audience from? Where are they based? Are they in the US? Are they in the UK? Is it 75% female, 25% male? Pull those demographics because all of that is helpful information for brands to use. You want your media kit to be very simple for the brand to read, include pictures of you, but do not include your rates, okay? Some of these templates show rates. Don't include your rates. Okay, you lose all negotiation power if you do. So just make a media kit. It's ready if a brand asks for it. Next month, we'll start pitching. Speaking of next month. Jumping into month eight, 
you've already created your digital product. So here's your digital product. What do you do next? Well, obviously we upload it to Stan store so that you could sell it. Next step is put the call to action in your link and bio. So you want to direct people to either your freebie or your paid product with a call to action in your bio, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, obviously you don't have like that bio appeal on YouTube. So instead what I like to do is I like to put my call to action or my paid product in the pinned comment of every single video and description. So as you can see with this video here, plan out your content for the rest of the year. My call to action is if you want to grow on Instagram specifically, check out the modern influencer course here and it directs people to my paid online course. Now, putting it in your bio is not the only way and the only thing to do. There's gonna be some more steps. So now what you're gonna be doing is you're going to actually start creating content around your paid product to direct people to your bio. And this doesn't have to be salesy. It doesn't have to be sleazy. It doesn't have to feel icky. You're not gonna be like, Hey guys, I made a digital product. Go buy it right now. That's that's not what we're doing. You could create a video simple like this. So this one's five ways to start making money. And then it says affiliate marketing, create digital product, offer service, blah, blah, blah. My caption is nice and jam packed. And then of course the call to action is come at the word monetize to get my 40 page guide that teaches you how to make money online. So that's a call to action. The video is not like salesy or anything. If you don't have those automated comments, all you have to do is say, check out the link in my bio for the step-by-step -step 40 page guide that teaches you 10 ways how to grow on social media or make money on social media. So those videos, they don't have to be super salesy. Same thing with this video. This video was telling people, hey, if you're a content creator, make a flipping email list. This video blew up and people were like, how do I make an email list? What do I do? So I was replying to comments and giving them value, free value, getting in their DMs like, Hey, this is what you do. This is how you do it. But also the more questions they asked, then I would direct them to my email list course. So I actually have a course for how to grow an email list. And this video ended up going viral. It wasn't salesy or anything, 1.3 million. And it wasn't me talking about the course at all. Really, you're just making content about the topic, getting people interested in the topic. And then when they go to the, your profile, they're gonna be like, oh, she has a paid product for this or a free resource about this. And they're more inclined to buy it because you're already giving free value within that topic. Now with brand collaborations, you already have your media kit created and you're not actually going to send out your media kit. You actually hardly rarely ever use a media kit, it's just nice to have on hand for when brands ask for it. Instead, what you're going to do this month is you're going to look for brands to pitch to and start pitching to them. So I have free pitch templates on my website. Again, they're free. This is a pitch that I would use to pitch to a brand. You're going to fill in those blanks and be like, hey, my name is Millie. I'm a YouTuber that teaches content creators how to grow online. Most importantly, I'm a huge fan of your Breville Espresso machine, right? <laughs> and then I customize the pitch to tell them either my ideas, why we we're a good fit, all the things. To find brands to work with, there's so many things you could do. You could look at your niche neighbors and see what brands they're partnering with. Because if they are partnering with brands, th those brands are probably looking for more influencers to partner with. There's also third-party platforms like Aspire IQ. They facilitate collaborations for brands and influencers where you can find campaigns to apply to, whether paid or gifted campaigns. It's a great way to just get connected with brands and start getting some practice under your belt. As you can see here, I'm logged into my Aspire IQ account, and these are all of the campaigns that are available that I could apply to. So that's another way to do it. You could also look at like shelf brands. So Breville's like a big name brand, right? So maybe you're like, okay, I don't know if I'm experienced enough to pitch to Breville. I don't know if Breville's like going to reply to me. What if they don't? Well, instead of pitching to Breville, when you follow a company, it's going to have suggest suggested brands under. Ooh, Ember would be a good one because they do the mugs that heat themselves up. I mean, they're kind of big, but they do the coffee mugs as opposed to like a whole espresso machine, soda stream, nuts.com. So I'm finding those ones that maybe they're not big name brands, but like Target. But if you went to Target, what sort of brands are they selling on the shelves at Target. So then you pitch to those secondary shelf brands just to kind of build that experience and confidence when you start pitching. Now, I know this is a lot of information to take in, but you don't have to know all of this stuff right now. Really, all you have to focus on is month one. 
and then come back in a month, rewatch this video and just focus on month two and so on. With each of these steps I'm talking about, go to my YouTube channel, look up the topics and search because I have videos on all these things. I have videos for how to pitch to brands. I have a video for how to create a freebie. Probably on everything I'm talking about, I have a video on it. Now, if you're somebody who values convenience, you're like, well, I don't wanna go through the hassle of trying to look up all these things. I want it laid out in front of me. Maybe you also value accountability. You want to be around like-minded people who are reaching for the same goals as you, then the BSP model is literally for you. For anybody who joins the BSP model, you get put into a Slack group, which is my favorite place to be. I am in Slack every day, Monday through Friday, and I am answering all questions that you have. If you ever get stuck at any point while going through all of the courses in the BSP model, you have access to me and my team in Slack. There's also other people there who get to share what they're going through and you guys can make great connections, maybe make a new best friend. You get access to the Slack group all the way through August of this year. So just dabble, take a look. Now the next few months can really go anywhere at this point, but for the sake of this video, I wanna keep it a little bit simple because we've already gone over a lot. So what you're going to do is the next few months, maintain your posting schedule but now you're going to start researching and integrating holiday content. If you're somebody who is watching this video in January, you'll be able to stick with this so that month one is January, month two is February and so on. So right about this time, we're getting into September, October, November, December, the holiday season. If you're watching this video and it's like August or September, you can start this right now. You don't have to wait nine months before you research the holiday content. If it's holiday season, just listen to these tips, okay? Hear me out. Because this right here, these four months, the end of the year, is where so many content creators blow up. So I have my student, Stephanie, who came to me in the month of September. She was getting ready to call it quits. She's like, I've been posting for so long and nothing is happening. What can I do? Stephanie, she's a food content creator. She has 8,000 followers on Instagram. She posts Instagram reels. And I was like, Stephanie, you need to get ahead of the curve. It's September, start making your October videos now. Start making Halloween holiday content now. And because she did that, she started thinking her content one month ahead. She went from 8,000 followers to over 70,000 followers in three months time. So this is what you're going to do. Month number nine or September. Prepare and film October content. If you have a niche or industry that can fluctuate with the holiday season, like Stephanie with her food content, she can make really cool holiday treats. You have an industry that can adapt all of these holidays, jump on those holiday trends. So in September, you're gonna start doing your SEO research for October. Look up what was trending last year, or even those evergreen search results. Is, is it Halloween charcuterie board? Or even if you're in the fashion industry, start looking up fall fashion trends. Start preparing your content and your ideas one month ahead. Also, September is a really great month to start pitching to brands asking them if they have any holiday campaigns coming up or Black Friday campaigns that you can be a part of because brands usually are hiring out, signing those contracts one to two months in advance because they have a specific budget for those things. If you're not somebody who is partnering with brands right now, maybe you could start thinking about holiday deals, Black Friday deals. Is that something that you want to offer for your digital products? Same thing for month number 10, you're going to foresee the next month's content. You're gonna start preparing November content, doing again, SEO research. Month 11, you guessed it, we're preparing our content for for the end of the year. December content, holiday content, winter content. We're preparing for month 12. Extra step here for month 11 is now you're also preparing for if you want to take a holiday break. So what my team and I do, we actually start this in September, October. I'm thinking, okay, December, I want to take two weeks off. If I'm taking two weeks off, my team should take two weeks off. So how can we plan YouTube videos ahead so that all of our YouTube videos for December and January so that when we come back from break, how can we get ahead of the curve? So in October and November, I'm actually filming December content and my first two weeks of January content so that I could take a break for the holiday season, be with my family. And if you wanna take a break for the holidays, prepare for that, make a plan for it. You don't have to film ahead of time, but just make a plan that works best for you. Which brings us to month 
12. This is where you're going to do your end of year recap. There are some journal prompts in the guide that I have created for you where you can reflect on the year of what worked, what didn't work, some goals that you want to set for the next 12 months. And here you're gonna be looking at overall videos, overall content, what worked really well for you, whether it was a specific video style or even it was your balance of content creation and life, you know, the, the amount of rest versus productivity. Was there a specific type of content that you didn't get to creating that you actually really wanted to? You're gonna set some new goals for the next 12 months and create actionable steps for each of those goals to hopefully help you get there by the end of next year. If you've made it this far, comment the secret phrase, I'll see you in 12 months down in the comment section. If you want more educational type videos like this, watch this video next. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Follow your joy. Bye.